Hi everybody, it's Mike with the Claim Squad Public Adjusters. My last video I talked about burst pipes, pipe bursts. We're going to go along that same theme. Slab leaks. A lot of people have slab leaks. A lot of people don't know they have slab leaks. Slab leaks sometimes come up more than likely when you feel water within your floors. If you have wood, tiles, you may look at some uplifting. So this is going to talk about how you're going to be able to file your claim with regards to roof or roof leaks, slab leaks. Um, let's get right into it first. You want to contact either a leak detection company or a plumber. So how do you know? If it's localized, the water damage, say in the bathroom, you notice your floors have up, uplifted. There's some sogginess. You notice there's some imperfections. The balance, one seems a little bit higher. Your baseboards, drywall. Anywhere along the walls a little bit wet, there's a good chance that's isolated. Bring in a plumber. However, if the leak is in the middle of your floor, let's say if you have an extended dining room, living room, and you notice that there's a variety of spots of your floors that all of a sudden become bulging, warped, okay, bring in the leak detection because it could be a larger issue on a larger scale with a larger part of your pipe being involved. So, um, as I mentioned in the pipe burst claims, we want to bring in a water mitigation company. Now, things of importance to know about the contract with the water mitigation company. A lot of them have if the insurance company doesn't pay you in 90 days or pay them in 90 days, they'll come after you, put a lien on your house, expect you to pay them, so on and so forth. What you want to do, find that out beforehand. If they will agree and if they'll put on the contract that they will not come after you after 90 days or put a lien on your house, um, that's the ideal situation. If they won't, find a company that will. Now, don't be alarmed by this one. It's common with slab leaks that you may have to have the water mitigation company uplift your floors. They may have to basically break open into some walls, um, remove cabinets, all right? We're going to get into all that later, but it's a it's a protocol that they have to follow because what could develop is mold and they have to dry that out. That's what you call mitigating your damages, which the insurance company requires you to do. So when you file your claim with the insurance company, here's the big key here. When these leaks are hitting, such as slab leaks, which are hidden under the floors, behind walls, sometimes people don't know about this, right? Well, you still never want to say that you didn't know the leak existed. It was there for a long time. Come, a couple months ago it happened. There's a reason for that. Okay, we're going to cover that after this next slide. But what you want to do is really make sure these words are followed. The leak just happened. Suddenly happened. Abruptly. Happened a few days ago. All right? So when you have this type of loss and it's discovered... This is how you want to really, um, the words and vocabulary you want to use when you're contacting and talking to the insurance company. So why does it matter what words you use? Just as a pipe burst claim and any plumbing claim really, every policy says this, constant or repeated leakage or seepage is not covered. Constant or repeated meaning in their minds, long term. It's been there for a long time. They're not going to cover it. That's why it's important a lot of times to have people represent you from the start of the claim so that you don't say anything that you shouldn't say. Now, you want to limit your conversation with these bad guys right here, all right? These guys are not your friend. Never will be, never could be, okay? The friend thing, nada. It doesn't work. So... Uh, it's hard hard writing a word with your, your mouse. So adhere to these following when it comes to dealing with the claim adjuster. Document your discussions, but keep things very limited. All right. Careful what you talk about when you talk about prices and rebuilds. and Because if you say that everything costs 10000 okay, to repair, and you let the insurance company know, you give them the estimate, they're gonna offer you five to seven. 
It's just the way it is. So, be prepared. Be prepared. Um, don't talk about when the leaks happen. All right. If you do, suddenly you don't remember how many days ago, a couple days ago. Leave it at that. <clears throat> Try to stay away from recorded statement. I can, I can um, help you with that. And you don't want to be present when the adjuster comes. Have a friend, neighbor, somebody else. Let that individual in. Let them do inspection and leave. Why? Because they're going to try and trick you, ask you questions, try and make sure they can find a way not to pay your claim, but either to fully underpay it or completely deny it altogether. So what are going to be the costs of plumber, the plumbers and repairs? So a lot goes into a few things. A plumber costs one tail, probably a limited section of your plumbing more than likely. It's rare that an entire plumber plumbing system from a slab leak happens. Now, it could be a large section. More than likely, it's going to be pretty much local or regional based within your plumbing system, meaning one, one side of the house, certain section of that side of the house, section in the middle of your house things of that nature so when it comes to the damages and what is damage if one section of your kitchen cabinets are damaged say the bottom the toe kicks guess what the insurance company has to pay for all of that okay everything they all need to get replaced same with the floors same with their walls same with paint etc so Let's say your kitchen is a blue paint color and you have that same light blue, dark blue, whatever blue it is around your entire house. Well, when they pay your kitchen, you are entitled to get your total house repainted again. So keep that in mind. So insurance company, they'll limit what you get paid for slab leaks. How? Well, if they're going to write an estimate that doesn't include everything, that what you are entitled to get and what you should be paid for. Now, they're going to do everything like I just mentioned the cabinets. What they'll do is say, well, we're only responsible for the lower part of the cabinets or we're not responsible for your cabinets at all. So um, this is common in the insurance adjusting business. Um, as I always say, I believe... Um, most of the times it's best to hire a public adjuster from the start all right especially if you have a significant claim a lower claim under ten thousand um feel free to try to handle it yourself um but just know even with those lower claims you're probably gonna come out of pocket a little bit public adjuster will be able to keep you from hurting your claim and damaging your claim so again my name is mike just a quick overview on slab leaks there's obviously more detail into into it and when you're filing your claim, but this gives you a brief overview of some important details. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, my name is Mike Keeler with the Claim Squad Public Adjusters. Here's my number, here's my email, and the website. Hope you enjoyed this video on slab leaks. Thank you.